Hi, we want to welcome you to the Jump Cut Bible Lesson Podcast Series. We're excited that you're here and looking forward to you being a part of CYA 2022. Um, I really hope this is going to be a resource that you can use as you pray and prepare and plan to teach kids this summer. All right, we're going to go ahead and introduce ourselves. I'm Esther, and I will be taking you through um, just pointing out a couple of the difficulties that might present themselves in um, the lessons that we're doing this summer. I'm Brandon, and I'll be pointing out some insights and some cool details in the story that you might want to share with the kids in the lessons. I'm Sarah, and I'll be walking you through some of the interactions that you can have in your Bible lesson to keep the kids engaged and excited. And my name is Ryan, and I'm going to take you through the sequence of story events. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below. Go ahead and hang with us all the way till the end. And if you do, you watch all the way through to the very end, and you message me or email me something that you hear at the end or something that stood out to you, then you can get a prize at CYA. So go ahead and hang with us and watch to the end. So let's get started in today's story. Our story for today is Noah and the Ark. So we want to start with the background. The creation started off good, and then there was a fall. Eventually, it got to the point where man was always thinking of evil. And you can read off Genesis chapter 6, verse 5. The Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intention of the thoughts of the heart was only evil continually. That's where we're going to get into the sin link, because we all think and we all do evil things. We all have a problem with sin. The sin right. application verse there is Romans 3.10. There's none righteous. No, not one. No one understands. No one seeks for God. That's when you link back into the story. What you want to help them see is that God saw how evil mm. they had become. Right. And that's that's important. Like the Bible says God saw the evil, not just what they were doing, but what they were thinking about, what their attitudes were. Every thought they had was evil. And so God saw that. He saw their sin. He saw what they were thinking about, their attitudes. And God sees yours too. And that's really, to me, that's your link. Like God saw their sin. God sees your sin too. Like you're no different. We're no different. Then we continue into the second picture here. After we have established that it's a sinful situation, then we can contrast it with Noah who believed and walked with God. You want to define there what it means to walk with God. Mm. God warns about the flood. It says, for behold, I will bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh in which is the breath of life under heaven. Everything that is on the earth shall die. And so mm. God is warning Noah of this situation of this impending flood. So God goes about giving Noah a set of instructions to rescue him. And so that's when you get into the idea of the ark and the dimensions of the ark. And there is Genesis 6, 22. It says, Noah did this. He did all that God commanded him. And we want to make the point that he obeyed because he believed in God's warning and he was willing to undertake and build God's rescue plan. Um, yeah. And just a few dimensions of the ark that might be fun to point out. Um, so the ark would have been about 510 feet long and then 75 feet wide. So that's really long. And then it also would have been 45 feet tall. It's probably the same height as two giraffes and a quarter giraffe. And, or you could just say it's as tall as a four-story house, which, which is probably what you should say anyway. But then it's also one and a half football fields long, including the end zones. Or it could be 155 Minecraft blocks long. So you could tell, you could share this with the kids any way you want. Yeah, and something you can do to get the kids involved during this time as you talk about how Noah was building the ark, being obedient in that way, you can have the kids pretend to build an ark with you. Maybe you could have different groups of kids pretend to do different things, or you could all together first, let's saw this wood in half, and then let's nail, and then let's, you know, whatever, all together. So that can be a really fun thing for the kids to do as you tell the story. Then when we're talking about how Noah walked with God, obviously you don't want the kids to be thinking. They're very literal. So you don't want them thinking that, okay, Noah went for a walk and talked to God. Um, no, but Noah walking with God means that Noah had lived his life in obedience to the Lord. You get to the, the word up and we see that Noah obeyed and the word up is the Holy Spirit is the helper. So this is where you might link into the growth link. We are also called to obey. How is that going to be accomplished? It's going to be through the Holy Spirit. He is our helper to do this. He reminds us, he helps us to choose, and he is always present. So when you're talking about the Holy Spirit, that could be a, a tricky thing to teach kids, but you're going to have to probably explain to them that there are 
um, three different persons of God, but there's only one God. And so you might want to give an example of something so they can relate that the Holy Spirit is God and it's God who lives inside of those who believe in him. And so this is specifically talking to save people because people who don't know God don't have the Holy Spirit um, living within them. If I could speak to why this application is here, it, it comes at a really great place because think about the culture Noah's living in. He's living in a culture of evil and sin and people just constantly being evil, but he's making that choice to walk with God. And, and, and that's what you want to share with the same children in your club. Say, hey, listen, the world around you is going to try to get you to do things that, that are not obedient to God. And so the Holy Spirit can help you to live in obedience to God, just like Noah we get to the third picture at this point, and here is where you're going to have a supposed conversation. We do not know what Noah and these people might have said to one another, but we can use our imaginations. What are you building? They might ask. Noah would reply, I'm building an ark. And we believe that he did tell them about what God's plan was. We believe that Noah warned them. We have 2 Peter 2.5. It says, Noah was a herald of righteousness. And this is important to build into the story because God has warned Noah and he's now using Noah to warn these other individuals. There's a reason why he does this. It's because God loves them. He wants mm -hmm. them warned and he wants them to know about this. We have the God application, John 3, 16, for God to love the world. And that includes everyone in the world. The big question that we're going to focus on in this story is, will they accept God's warning? Will they accept? his rescue. Mm -hmm. And he was preaching this message for decades. It's not just something that happened overnight. And he did this until it was finished. And on this slide, this is where you have Noah finishing the ark. God could have just built the ark for Noah, but God tells Noah to build it. And it takes him a really long time to build it. It takes Noah arguably about 75 to 100 years to build the ark. There's plenty of people who can see Noah, who can see this big ark and have the, like you said, Ryan, the opportunity to go and accept this, this solution. God tells Noah to build the ark and it takes so long is another expression of God's love to these people, even though they are sinful. And I would add to that, I believe that it was, um, people have confirmed that there wasn't really rain in the world at this point right. in time. So God had told Noah to build an ark in the middle of a desert where there had never, ever been rain. And so the act of faith um, mm. that Noah just went and obeyed God is pretty profound um, and something that no wonder why these people thought he was crazy because they didn't even know what rain really was. Then we got to do the uh, uh, sponsor. Uh, Noah had to work with a lot of wood to build the ark, didn't he? And so that brings us to today's sponsor, Trees in the Bushes at Camp. And they're excited to spend some time with you guys, listening to your stories and contemplating your presentations. They are so eager to give feedback in the form of rustling and waving. So go outside and talk to your favorite tree today and support the CYA Jump Cut Bible Lesson Podcast. Yes. So we've seen the people in their sin. We've seen it contrasted with Noah and his righteousness, how he obeyed God. And then we just saw in the last slide the preaching of Noah to those individuals so that he was a herald of righteousness. And so now we're going to build out how the animals got to the ark. Again, we don't know exactly how the food was stored, but again, we're going to use our imaginations with the kids about they probably needed food for the animals and they might have started stocking up food. The people around them might not have understood why they needed so much food. And so there's another connection between Noah and the mockers or these people that are around him. Then we see the animals coming to be rescued via the door of the ark as they are loaded onto the ark. And again, there's another interaction there with the people they might not have understood. Why are these animals coming? And that is where our Jesus link is. God has given us an open door to be saved in Jesus Christ. He's given us an opportunity. Jesus' application here is Colossians 1.14, and that says, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins, that one way of salvation is through Jesus, and the mockers may have wondered about the status for seven days. As you get back into the story, they don't understand this, but eventually the door shuts, and the opportunity to be rescued is unfortunately closed. And I think one really fun thing you could do with the kids in this part of the story is you could like have all of them make the sound of their favorite animal at once, like as the animals are coming out of the woods, and just some of them will be oinking and roaring and it's really fun just to get them engaged and then you can also bring the story back because it's kind of solemn when God shuts the door and so 
I always like have the kids count with me. There was one day, two day, three day, four day, five days. And these people had a choice where they get in the boat. And then when I get to seven, I just make the loudest bang I can make out of my own voice. Um, and then say, but bang. And then the time was up and God, mm. closed, God was the one who closed the door because he had already given them that opportunity to be rescued. That's when we get to the fifth picture with Noah and the ark and the storm and his family is safely inside. You want to talk about the rain and the flood and the description of those events? As you're telling this part of the story, you can really play up the drama and excitement of this part. Mm -hmm. So something that I love to do, and I think we all love to do this, is to make the sound effect of rain with the kids where you start by rubbing your legs, your hands on your, your legs, hands, yeah. and then you can rub your hands together and then you can start snapping. And then you can start clapping. Yes, do that too. And so it sounds like rain when there's a bunch of kids doing it and all the leaders are doing it. It sounds like rain getting heavier and heavier and heavier. And it's really, really fun. And an extra thing that you can bring out is if you have a little spray bottle, like what, for, where you like missed a plant or a cat or whatever. Or a, or a, gun, or a hose. Or a squirt gun, <laughs> not a hose. Make a squirt gun or, you know, spray bottle. You can miss the kids in that part as you're talking about the rain and it was coming down. And like when they feel that little mist on them, they get like so <laughs> literally immersed in the story. And so right. it's really exciting. Um, it's really dramatic. And it's something that will get the kids to really be listening to your every word. It's fun because they like think that their little hand going together like caused the rain to come. It's crazy. <laughs> it's fun. What about those outside who weren't rescued? This is something that you're going to need to address. You're going to contrast those people who were outside with those who were inside the ark and who were safe. And that's where you're going to get into the 40 days and nights of the rain. And you want to develop this idea. Did God want anyone to perish? The answer there is no. He wanted everyone to come to repentance. It's kind of sad, right? And people often will say, how could God destroy all these people in the flood? But I just, it's important that we as teachers understand that God, the buildup to this point in the story, how many days did God wait with the door open? How many years was Noah out there proclaiming, mm. this is what God is going to do. So this is a point in the Bible that's hard, but we also see God's love and his justice and how they work together because God cannot allow evil to continue to just go and go and go. Because if God just allowed evil to happen and never punished it, would he be a good God? Um, and there's a verse actually in the Bible that says it's in the Old Testament, it's in Ezekiel, it says, say to them as I live, declares the Lord, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live back. Turn back, turn back from your evil ways for why will you die, O house of Israel? God doesn't want these people to die. Mm. His heart for them is to turn back, but because he's just, mm. um, he has to punish evil. And then I think it's important too to say that because Noah, and now we say, but Noah and his sons and their wives were safe in the ark because they had obeyed God, because they had trusted God's plan. Anyone could have trusted God's plan, but it was the eight Noah's family, and those were the ones who chose to do it. And because of that, they were safe. The rain stops, the water recedes, the ark rests on Mount Ararat. And we want to talk about why this happened. Why was Noah saved? It's because he believed in God's warning and his rescue plan, and he was willing to act on that belief. Noah and his family worshiped God after they got out of the ark. They built an altar, and a rainbow was given, and that's when you want to get into the clean link. What about you? Will you believe like mm. Noah did? Will you believe in his rescue plan? Will you believe in his warning? And that's where you get Acts 16.31. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved. Mm. Yeah, so quite a profound little, really a great picture of what is going to come, right? We have to make that choice. When people didn't believe, we have to make that choice to get in the ark um, now while we're alive. Mm. Um, but there's one thing that kids will always begin to ask when you're teaching this story. And I am not a scientist person. I'm not like a huge thing into all that kind of stuff. But you're going to have kids who are going to be like, well, where's the ark today? How do we know this really happened? You're going to have people, not at every club, but you're going to have a few um there's actually a kid at CYA who was that kid in my good news club um always asking all the questions and so remember there is a great resource in answers in Genesis like they have I would say there's actually a website that has all the answers um about the ark about what happened um and so give them if they're one asking a lot of questions you can give them that as a resource or you can maybe do some study on your own before you teach mm. um so just be aware that the kids are going to begin to ask those kinds of questions 
And then also the rainbow given, right? We want to point out this is God's rainbow. This is the God's promise that he will never right. destroy the earth again. God's promise is to be kept. He will never go back on his word. Um, and this rainbow, this is the first time there was a rainbow used. And um, this, make sure you tell them this is God's rainbow. This is not the mm -hmm. rainbow that's to be confused with the gay and the lesbian and the pride and that kind of stuff, right? We are not mm -hmm. advocates for that. And so just make sure this is God's rainbow. It's just seven colors. It's different than the rainbow right. um, that is used. Yes for the LGBTQ movement. And so just make sure that we differentiate. Diff this was the first time a rainbow was seen and this is what the rainbow truly represents. Mm. Hashtag right. God's rainbow. <laughs> That's yes, so if you watch all the way to the end in this part of the story, then send me a text, shoot me an email, send me an Instagram message, Snapchat me, hashtag God's rainbow. Make sure you capitalize um, the G. You gotta say that code word or else I'm not gonna believe that you watch all the way to the end. Go ahead and like and subscribe down below and leave a comment for us. Yes, and make sure that you are studying your lesson, practicing out loud. You can practice with somebody else if you want to just kind of bounce off them and see what they think, how you're doing. Um, we can't wait to see you at camp, all studied up and ready to go. Thanks for joining us for the Jump Cut Bible Lesson Podcast or CYIA 2022. God's blessings on your study. Woo! Woo!